welcome to the show. You're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. As the International Space Station recently steered clear of a dangerous space debris, we speak to the CEO of the Japanese startup Astroscale. He'll tell us more about the concept he's developed to clean orbital highways from space trash thanks to a ferromagnetic satellite. And in Test24, we try two telepresence robots, Ubo and Lobo, from the French startup Axon, as well as an autonomous industrial preparation robot by Exotech, a company that has just raised 90 million euros. Now, several days ago, an unknown piece of space debris was detected near the International Space Station, and NASA was actually forced to execute an avoidance maneuver to get out of its way. While the agency says the crew was never in any danger, it's the third time this happens this year alone, shedding light on the growing problem of space trash. Well, to speak more about it, I'm now joined in the studio by France 24's Peter O'Brien. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks, Julia. So, the International Space Station has actually been hit by debris in the past, so perhaps tell us more about that and about how much of a problem this is. Yeah, so I think what we need to understand first of all is just how much space we're talking about. We're talking about an area called low Earth orbit, which is everything basically up to 2,000 kilometers away from Earth. It's a big area, but we've got a lot of stuff up there. We've got about 34,000 pieces of junk or satellites which still work, or bits of rockets which have come off after launches, floating around up there, 34,000 bits bigger than, than uh, 10 centimeters. Then we've also got a lot of microscopic um, bits of debris, about 100 million pieces that we can't even track, which are smaller than a centimeter big, but even these can cause a lot of damage. So a pea-sized um, bit of debris, if it hits a satellite, will destroy it. Let's take an, uh, um, an example and look at um, uh, this a, a test piece from the Houston Space Center's ISS gallery. It was, um, it's an aluminium block which is about 10 centimeters thick and it was hit by a small plastic cylinder which was fired out as a, a sort of scientific air cannon and it went at about 25,000 kilometers an wow. hour. You can see the impact here. So this is it's about huge. the speed that it would, yeah, it's, it's going about the speed that it would in orbit. It was a test like carried out on Earth, but just a tiny piece, only 14, um, about 14 grams light, did that to aluminium. Um, the ISS has a number of chips on it already. You talked about the near miss, but astronaut Tim Peake from the European Space Agency actually took a photo of what happened when a tiny fleck, no bigger than a tiny um, a, a thousandth of, of, of a millimeter, hit the um, window of the ISS and created this seven millimeter across um, dent. So it's actually quite surprising that there aren't more accidents. Absolutely, yeah. And it's not just the danger of satellites being knocked out of orbit or potentially humans being put at risk. There's also a theoretical event called Kessler syndrome, which is a collision cascade. So that means that if you have one collision, it could lead to two, two could then lead to four, could then lead to eight. Eventually, it, 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 it um, increases exponentially to the point where all of low Earth or orbit is unpenetrable. We can't send anything into space anymore. Well, we do hope that we don't get to that point. Thank you very much indeed for that, Peter. We'll be back with you in just a moment. But in the meantime, I'd like to bring in Nobu Okada. He's the founder and CEO of the Japanese startup Astroscale that has become the world's first private space sweeper company. They've created a satellite that will be launched on a Soyuz rocket able to detect and magnetically capture pieces of space junk. We're from Tokyo. Nobu Okada, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Hi, Julia. It's nice, very nice to see you, and thank you very much for covering us in Astro Scale. So tell us, how did you come up with this idea of cleaning up the outer space? It was several and a half a year ago. Um, I really wanted to devote myself to the space industry during my 40s, and then I was looking for what the, the hot topic in space. It might be a new exploration, a new rocket, but I found space debris issue is a hot topic and it, nobody had a solution for it. So I decided by, by myself to solve this. So could you perhaps explain how your system actually works? Yeah, um, so before talking about how to solve this issue, let me explain how serious this issue. The, the, there are more than 25,000 debris, garbage, are flying, traveling along the Earth, and the density of the debris have reached to the critical level where 
chain reaction or collision can happen at any near future. So it is uh, very urgent to remove large objects now before it, they get smaller. And then what we do is um, if you go to the space, there are lots of lights, sun, moon, earth, stars, debris. We have to find out which debris you are tackling and then approach it to the debris. And then once you approach the debris, debris is tumbling, rotating. And then our satellite will synchronize the motion, synchronize the motion like a dance, and then capture the debris, stabilize and bring them down to the atmosphere and burn. So then we will clean up one debris. Now, what will be the different tasks of Astroscale and when are you set to start cleaning orbital highways? Um, the reason why nobody could solve this issue was this, this issue is very complex. So we have to uh, tackle from three aspects, technology, business model, who pays money for this? And the third is a regu uh, kind of policies, regulations. And then each of them is very complex. So technology wise, we are going to uh, have a, the world first demonstration with the removal uh, pretty soon in the coming month. And then the business model, uh, we we be talking with potential customers in commercial company and, and then uh, governments, and then we are getting there. So we already got some contracts, and then we we try to get, get more contracts going forward. And the policy uh, wise, uh, until two years ago, uh, nobody was seriously thinking about space operations. But now the landscape has changed. The major uh, advanced countries are taking seriously about this issue and then the, the, the more regulations are coming uh, at each domestic level. Nobu Okada, the CEO of Astroscale, thank you for that. Now, Peter, uh, we just spoke about it with Nobu Okada. He, he's just mentioned it. it. There's growing awareness, of course, about this topic. Uh, there are different solutions out there that are being developed. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about these solutions. Absolutely. So, for example, the University of Surrey has actually already carried out an experiment where they've sent up a, uh, a spacecraft which is loaded with um, both a giant net and also a harpoon in order to um, capture debris. So the net works by just a massive net, surrounds the debris, still attached to their spacecraft. This is the debris that they sent out. Here comes the um, net here. And then the harpoon works in a similar way. So they sent out a little test um, target and fired a harpoon at it, dragged it back into the, um, into the uh, vessel. And then what happens after all of this is the thrusters on the vessel then take, take both the debris and the vessel down into the Earth's atmosphere where it all burns up. And there's other solutions which are even more out there we're working on. So the one is called a, a, a laser broom. And okay. it's a laser which is fired from Earth and it interrupts the orbit of a piece of debris by slowing it down or turning it around so then it falls into the atmosphere and starts to burn up as well. There's another one which is being developed by a Russian space startup called Start Rocket. And it makes me feel a little bit queasy, this one. You'll, you'll see why. It's, um, it's a polymer foam which is ejected from all sides of the vessel. It's a kind of um, spider web which then captures all the debris around it and brings it all down with it, takes it all down into the atmosphere where it all burns up. Seems like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. Yeah. Uh, now, we were just talking about it as well with Nobu. Regulation is going to be key to try to deter countries from littering into space. Absolutely. So removing the junk actually might just encourage more launches because if a company thinks, well, we might lose one or two, but if we send enough up there, then it'll be worth our while. So some experts are trying to say we need to combat this by imposing a fee to orbit. So every second minute year that your satellite or other object is out there, you need to pay for it. It's a great idea in theory, but the problem is it will require a lot of international collaboration and potentially some legal challenges, which could actually be more difficult in the end, who knows, than something like a huge space laser. Even though there are, uh, there's a lot of uh, international collaboration actually up there in space. Of course. Thank yeah. you very much indeed for that, Peter O'Brien. We're going to move on now to Test24.
On the set of Test 24 this week, we have three different robots, including a telepresence robot that can adapt to any environment, let it be business, education, health, retail, and even events, Peter. Yes, absolutely. So we've got quite a crowded set here. We've got three robots and also the sales exec of uh, tech company, French tech company Axin, Fabien Kaplanas, who's with us here. Um, he's He's inside of this uh, telepresence robot, as you said. Um, uh, what I wanted to ask is, we've seen a lot of these kind of robots used um, over the course of the last few months in hospitals, for example, um, for patients with COVID-19. So what does your particular robot um, bring as a, unique, as a new, unique interpretation of this? Okay. So Hugo is uh, fully operational in 5G. Uh, it is conceived, developed and manufactured in France. It is based on Android, so it is meant to embed any app on the market. This is a social robot with non-verbal interactions. Great. Thank you so much, Fabien. We've also got another one of your robots here, which is the Lobo, which is a small logistics robot, which you can use for, for offices. Um, it also has a, has a little, uh, has an iPad on it as well, so you can, uh, uh, can use that. And there's, uh, we've also got a, a logistics robot here as well, Julia. From another startup this time. Yes, absolutely. So this one's from Exotech. It's called the Skypod. And the difference with this is you use it in a factory. It goes um, it, in 2D space and can process with a fleet of them around 450 uh, different, different crates in an hour. But it can also go up and down. So it can go up and down the shelves in a, in, in a, um, in a warehouse. Uh, so that's its, its innovation for you. Thank you very much indeed for that, Peter O'Brien. Fabien, thank you as well for uh, being on set with us today. And it actually brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24. You can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you soon.